Hello friends, I hope you are well and coping in these uncertain times we find ourselves in. I started 2022 with a lot of ideas for things I wanted to make all jostling around inside my head, vying to be made into reality. At times I find it completely overwhelming having so many ideas that I end up not starting any of them. Sometimes I feel creativity can be a burden especially when you have an overactive, imaginative mind like mine. I am slowly learning to accept this completely normal trait that I have, and I'm putting energy into finding ways on how I can calm my mind and the barrage of ideas flying around in there. I started a new making diary, a very pretty calendar notebook I got from Bespoke Letterpress. It has a great section where you can write out your goals and intentions. I wrote mine specific to making. It then has a two page calendar spread for each month. I record down what I work on each day and the hours it takes me. There is also a section where I can write down the projects I want to try and focus on the most for that month. Whether they are items to sell in my handmade shop, something for myself, an experiment or a new design or pattern for the maker's stash. Of course, sometimes I don't want to work on the items I have said I'm going to focus on, and rather than feeling bad about that, I have decided to just let the creativity flow to where it wants to be. I'm hoping this method will help me to focus on some intentional projects, but also allow me the freedom to create on a whim.
I don't take on commissions very often, partly because I don't like to put pressure on myself to get something done by a certain date, and partly because of my tendency to get bored with a project and wanting to work on something else. However, when a good friend asked if I could make her some hexy hearts for her three girls' birthdays, I couldn't say no. You will see me here working on getting the first heart, a pink one, made from three eighths inch hexes framed up. My friend wanted to have the names, birthdays, times, weights and length of each girl embroidered around the hearts. This was an interesting challenge, but one I really enjoyed. It also gave me a great opportunity to practice my stem stitch.
In February, I took part in Lemon Made Shop's Cozy Quilt Stitch Along. I love this pattern by Celeste as it incorporates my love for patchwork with my newfound love of embroidery. It was a wonderful piece to dive into to learn new embroidery stitches and techniques. Each day, Celeste would release a new reel on Instagram and take you through the steps to make each patchwork block. Then she guided you through finishing the quilt design and creating the flowers. I learnt a lot making this piece. I discovered lots of new stitches, some I enjoyed, some I didn't like at all, and some I had to unpick and stitch twice before I was happy with them. I wasn't completely happy with my fabric choice in the end either. If I was to use a thin light coloured fabric like this one again, I would definitely use another piece of fabric behind it and stitch through the two layers of fabric so that my knots and ends can't be seen from the front. I left my work in the hoop frame, trimming away the excess fabric rather haphazardly and then cinching it all in at the back. I like to leave my hoops like this so that if the piece ever requires cleaning, I can easily remove it. I made these delightful fabric scrap hearts to sell for Valentine's Day. They are a wonderful quick make. I also worked on a batch of Hexi flower pin cushions and needle books to sell. I have had the Hexi flowers piece for ages and just hadn't gone around to finishing them. 
Projects always come to a screaming halt when I'm up to the stage in making that involves getting my sewing machine out. I hope you enjoyed this vlog about what I have been making these past couple of months. Until we meet again, may your crafting bring you peace and joy.